years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Ezel Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, the 26th of March. We're looking at the Dow uh, up 21 at 39,335. It's so interesting that the Dow has had so many divergent stocks, some that are making all time highs and others doing well, and then suddenly dropping sharply 10, 15 percent. Um, this tells me that you've got a very mixed market. You've got a, a number of aspects within the market that need to be monitored closely. But I, 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 as far as the sell mode is concerned, we won't get anything until you see the S&P futures. There has to be bad news. It impacts the market, and the futures have to be minus 58 to minus 62 in the S&P. The Dow must be down 373 to maybe 425. A, a rally attempt is for, a, a attempt is just initiated. It can't get any traction, and it closes down sharply. Then the next day, and then overnight, of course, overseas markets get nervous. Then they sell off. Then the next day, the futures are down sharply. Market tries to rally. It makes this arch formation. Dreaded H tries to rally, then fails and then takes out the low of the day and closes down horribly at least two consecutive days. We haven't seen anything like that. We've seen one day sharp declines, and immediately you see the market higher. We've actually even seen sharp move to the upside in the market sort of stalls. So when I talk about a short-term sell signal, <clears throat> I'm looking at just purely the technicals, and in the Dow, you can see even now there's a struggle. It made this high of 39,889, went into the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It's pulled back two sharp down days, and today it's kind of meandering up 36. I wouldn't be surprised. I said to subscribers, it wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a bounce here. But the whole thing is I'm going to go to this chart, which we've just faithfully uh, looked at and used as a kind of a benchmark yeah, so that even when I'm looking at short-term sell signals, the big impact, the most important aspect is that this nine-period moving average is still positive. Look how high it is above the 14. To get a real sell-off, you'd have to see the Dow to get this green line, the nine-period moving average. I'll move to this chart here because all you see are the three uh, uh, trend lines. This is the gray is the, the Dow. Uh, this is a daily chart. <clears throat> And that's got the intraday action. The green is the 9 period moving average, and the black is the 14. And look how many times it's held the, the green line and then bounced. And once or twice, it goes underneath it, even takes out the black 14 period moving average, and then goes back again. Even here, back in early March, twice now in March, you've had sharp sell-offs, and the 9 period moving average just refused to even consider going pink, which would be a negative. So this is... The short term, uh, let me just go to this chart to show you exactly what I'm thinking. The short term sell signal is based on the Dow. This is what I show subscribers, the, the white charts right here. This is what I show subscribers every day. I give it an analysis, a synopsis of what we're looking at. And use, I'm basing it always on the Dow. It implies the same kind of parameters for the S&P and the other indices because they all go together, right? But when sell-offs occur, one leads the other, but we don't know yet if that's going to be the case here. But look, the 120-minute chart is in a sell mode. It's it's dropped sharply. Um, it's got the support here at 39,201. That's Chapman Wave automated support levels. Uh, it hasn't gotten there yet, so it's holding quite well. <clears throat> so I needed to show you that just to show you, explain what I'm looking at. So we've got a sell signal in the Dow daily, we've got a sell mode in the 120. But wait a minute, the S&P hasn't done that. The S&P is still acting really well. Look here, we go SPX.X, there we go. S&P, 
holding at the higher range within a dozen, two dozen points of its all-time high. Uh, 5261 is trading at 5230, 31 points from making a new all-time high. But you are starting to see a little bit of a deterioration just in the, the, the lines, the angles that are being formed. <coughs> Excuse me. The 120-minute chart went to its 14-period uh, moving average, tested it four times. That's 420-minute bars trying to bounce here. And uh, the 9 is over the 14. The MACD is flat, but it does con maintain the last major signal, which is still an up mode. The stochastic still at 85%. That's really strong. On balance volumes pull back, and relative strength is not making the highs that it's been making uh, in February and March uh, up until now. It's making lower highs. And those are just hints to say it's getting a little bit tired, but that's all you can say. So far, nothing to see. QQQ, same thing. Look, left side chart daily. Holding very well. Up $1.79 at 446.58. The, the MACD flipped back to positive. The relative strength is weak, but it did manage a little bit of a bump up. Stochastics at 78% under the 80% level. So this is kind of a warning. And the on-balance volume is weak. So this is still holding well. But there are signs that if there was a pullback below 442, it's at 446.81 right now, that would start to roll over, making kind of an arch formation. But the weekly charge leg D, still very strong. Uh, a move but above 49.34 by one penny extends its leg D and a leg B in the monthly. IWM, IWM um, has been holding pretty well. It hasn't really shown leadership, but it has broken out of the long rectangle that it's been in for over a year. It's trading at 206.68, up a dollar twelve. Good action. But what's, really, what's interesting, there was even a round number open the other day. But let's just get to what it, where it is right now, 206.64. That round number was at 207. It has made a peak D already. So you can see, when we're looking at the rotation to the Chapman Wave notations, um, we've already got the D is where other things can happen. It's your objective to get to the D. Once you get to the D, you have to monitor it closer. Well, you've got the uh, you've got the... IWM, and you've got the, the uh, let me just go through this again, you've got the QQQ, it's still only in, uh, here we go, QQQ is still only in leg D, it hasn't formed a peak D, but it means you've got an acceleration in the, the notations. All right, now within that, with that said, let's go to um, the XLK, this is the S&P Select, this is the Select uh, Tech Spider Fund, making a little double top, 212.35, uh, back in early March, then mid-March, it goes to 200, I think it was just pennies under it, 211.93, 40-something 40, 40 cents. Okay, so, and a peak E already in the uh, weekly charts. All right, SMHs. SMHs, up at thirty one at 228.40, holding very well. It's gone into the inside track, which was the, Repellent zone, then the propellant zone, then the repellent zone, and now it's a repellent zone once again. Um, this is going to be very important because if it starts to fail, it'll only fail if it, it's, if it closes any day in the next three sessions below two, two, I'd say two, two, four. Two to four, uh, two, two, three. I'll be back. Dow's up 41, S&P's 14. Uh, yeah, got a little bit of a bounce going on here. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, let, let me just say in the Chapway methodology, that key, key, the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. Look here on the five-minute chart, it's 50, about 5,300. You had your peak, the little double top there, and a pullback from 5,300 down to the uh, 5,285 uh, level. Now it's starting to rally again above the 200-period moving average. In the 10-minute uh, chart, it was also a peak, D, and came all the way back down. Um, and now that 200 period moving average is trying to act as a support level. And you can see it's tackling it in the one minute chart. How, how long does it take to push away and how much does it push away um, is going to be the key. And we're looking at, yeah, there's a one minute chart pushing away. The next level would be 52, 90. 596 that'll be resistance. Let's see what happens there. Okay, let's get back to our story. So a question came in about where did I go? Right, right. C CLSK. Is that right? CLSK is Clean Spark Inc. Data centers run on low carbon power support the Bitcoin area. So you can see the U shaped pattern. Now, this is something that I, as a development of the Chapman Wave methodology, one of the reasons why I, I mean it is just so fascinating. And the fascination itself and the challenge is really what is so exhilarating, I find. And one of the reasons why I've spent so long and so many years just notating, learning about the notation of the Chapman Wave, learning different patterns. And one of the things that's happened, and there are certain patterns that make themselves obvious only by the number of times that they occur. And for the last, I would like to say six weeks, but I've got a feeling time flies that is probably almost three months. I've seen cup formations whereby the speed of the left side decline from a peak D, E, or F, left side high, starting to form what could become a cup formation. As long as that left side low is held, you can start to count another Chapman wave inside that and that it very often goes to a D above the left side high. This is that I, I had a terminology for it way back. I used to call it the drop bucket pattern where you make double tops. It's like a backhoe that lifts up uh, the, all the gravel, lifts it up, lifts it up, and then just drops it. And that's, that, that's the, cup, the cup formation. 
And what's really important is that you need to close at least two or three times uh, in th out of three consecutive days, at least two of those days, you need to close above the left side high. So this is the second day we're above the left side high of the, of the February 27th high. Uh, that's um, 23.45. We Yesterday we went to 24, just over 24, I think we had 24.08. Today's high so far is 23.79. And what's really important about this, normally I would do a left side, right side price time match. And I, I always start off saying, well, maybe the rally that made the first cup formation is the one um, and then what I do is I grab the, the right side, see if it matches. So this is green right there. And this is this is pink left side. So you've got yourself one cup formation that's already formed. It got the exactly right, and now it's gone above it. And it's a leg E in the weekly chart and the leg E in the monthly chart. It's a peak E in the 120-minute chart. So you say to yourself, wow, what a nice technique. You know, gee, you got all these letters and they, just, they don't just form. I have to type them in. And most of the time, it's a very simple thing, just counting each successively higher peak. D is the objective to go from a buy signal to a buy mode. At D, other things can happen. Woof, did that happen here? Another peak D, woof. And this went to either E slash B or E. I'm calling it E for now because it's just a continuation of the nine period exponential moving average. So the question is, I had a question yesterday just as I was wrapping up. I didn't have a chance to get to it about Clean Spark Inc. And I've got a couple of questions today about it, coincidentally, different people. And what about it? Actually, what is the exact last question that I had on it here? Um, where did it go? Uh, that was... Peaky had that. Uh, I've got it right. I get peak C on a daily CLSK. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait a minute. So let me just do this because this is what we usually do on um, Fridays. So I do technical Friday. No, let me open this up for you and you can see exactly what I did. And it's very consistent. You need to always do this. Your objective is to take the lowest bar. Uh, that's the starting point, and every peak after that gets counted. Well, this is A, after that peak E. I think we agreed, peak E, that we're starting from this low that was the low of the um, 5th of March at 14.78. So that's a peak A, and it's usually gray because it hasn't gone above that peak E, and it hasn't gone to a C yet. That's an A. Look, this is the starting point. Remember, you've got to count each peak from the low bar. It's the only objective you have. It's not a difficult thing to do. So that's an A, but that's an A. That's a B, that's a C, and there's your D. Uh, why do I do that? Because I want to get to D as quickly as possible. I don't want to think of it as a C <clears throat> waiting for a D. Um, so I found over the years, it's actually about 10 years or 12 years now from my original conception where I used to count A, then this would be B. <clears throat> no. I found it's really important to count every peak from that low. So this is already at a D. There's nothing to say, oh, D, you got to, uh, uh. no, it's just a D. And now you got to see, look, the ten, the nine's over the 14, the price is way over the nine, the MACD is good, stochastic's flat at 84%, on balance volume is not overboard, it's, it's good, and the relative strength is rallying with the price, not as strong as it was back here in <clears throat> February when it was only in the 18s. But still good. Okay. I hope that's clear. Let me just check to see if you've given a little. I stand corrected. <laughs> well, I'm the inventor of the waveform, so I could say anything. No, that's that, you know, that's that's the traditional stuff. And now that I've gone through it, you're probably saying, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. So that doesn't mean to say, oh, you've got to be careful. But the 120 minute chart <clears throat> is what you need to monitor. And that 120 minute chart. <clears throat> Made a beautiful left side, right side time, not a price, but a time match to that peak D. Now it's extended with the technicals, very good. Stochastics at 91% in the 120 minute uh, chart, 84% in the uh, daily chart. All of that's really good. So what I would look at is I say, where is support? Where is resistance? Where would I say, uh-uh, 
<clears throat> got to take a little bit off. I don't see anything just yet to say take anything off. Um, what I would say is the low today is 22.35. If it starts to take out 22, I don't want to make it too tight, 21.80. Then I'm just going to say to you, I still don't think I take my original position off. But if you think of it as a trading aspect, and then the objective here at peak D is to either take just a tad off or make a stop on some part of it, a little lower down. It just doesn't fly. You haven't got any indication yet. So let me just, as we go to the bit, let me get Bitcoin up. Bitcoin is trading. I'll do a notation of this uh, when we get back, but it is trading down 1,155. I think it's made a shorter term at the top, and I'll talk about it with you. That's a chapter, thank you. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technicians Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. I'm just checking uh, emails, my various email sites. So, okay. So what I was talking about is the Bitcoin at, at uh, 69,775. So there are three, three patterns that we're looking at here. 
One is that we've got a G slash C in the Chapman Way methodology. Oh, wait. Someone asked me about the inside. Oh, am I going to be able to? Oh, oh, I'll do that right now. Very good question. Let me write that down because I, I, I remembered it. I remembered it. And then I completely forgot it with the last question that came up. So let me just put that down. Was it an instant restart in Hood? Another question was Tesla. I've got that down. And the question here is um, Bitcoin, BTC. Oh, got it. Okay, we're all set. So in the Chamberlain methodology, if there was an instant restart, it doesn't have to always be. Sometimes you can get instant restart within two or three bars where it goes to a new leg E, then it goes E slash A, but sometimes it actually restarts by itself. This is four bars but it has the same characteristic that the nine-period moving average is just so strong. And the MACD, the nine-period differential, is so strong. And the stochastic is over 80%, so strong. And then all of a sudden they start to, to um, decline, but that nine is still holding you tight right there, and that's important. So I'm calling this a G slash C, meaning there's an alternate count, and I need more evidence to call it a G. And at this particular point, it's still an active G slash C, meaning there could be, so that's number one. Number two is, I'm about to sneeze, don't sneeze. So you see this over here, the cup formation. Uh, I don't want to go into it right now, just to say that it tries to get back to the left side high. But if it fails at a peak A or B, <clears throat> and then takes out the left side low, that's called the dreaded H. And you've got to be really careful because that can come down as much as the height of the arch to the base to the downside. We know none of this right now. All we know is that there's a rally that's been attempted. You've got a doji candle peak F. I'm not even calling it an, uh, an alternate count at this particular point. It's it, The nine is so strong that uh, I'm going to keep it, calling it at this point an F in the weekly chart. And it's a leg C in the monthly chart. I don't have to do anything about it. It could be an alternate count. I don't need to do that. All the technicals are strong enough to say it could pull back. I'm anticipating a higher high sometime in 2024. How long any any uh, the duration of any pullback is depends on the distance between the nine period moving average and the 14 period moving average when and if it declines to go pink. And then you still have to look at the weekly charts. So this is an extremely strong, strong instrument, the Bitcoin. So as it stands right now, if this fails, if it goes to a C, then there's a real good chance it's going to go above 74,415. It's a continuous contract. Maybe at the end of the month, the price changes. But I'm keeping it right now as it stands at 74,415. GBTC has almost the same pattern. Um, and that has made a peak D at 65.61. So, so some of you may, maybe don't get the futures. So let me just do this. This is the Bitcoin. Here we go. This is the Bitcoin Investment Trust. And this one did have a Chapman Wave instant restart. And here I have no choice but to say G slash C. Because it's, it's confirmed. I can do it very legitimately. It's part of my methodology. There's no changes. I'm just doing what I do all the time, right? <clears throat> now, what's really important is that if this GBTC, Bitcoin Investment Trust, to fail, it isn't just that the price has to go uh, under, <clears throat> I'd say, at this particular point, under right there. The nine-period moving average is at uh, 50.29. Yeah, 50. Is that eight? Yeah, it's hard to see. Oh, it's 60. 60.29. I'm going to see. I'll put my glasses on and see if it's any better. It's not that much better. Maybe a little bit better. Okay. 60.32. And the black 14 period moving average is at 59.52. To get that to become negative, you'd have to see a price close below 55. We're at 62.20. To go to 65, that is a monster pullback. So all I'm saying is that the scene is set for some kind of a slow rollover if the 65.61 level is not taken out. So we don't have a, a session on Good Friday, this Friday. Let's call it, I'm going to go all the way for a week's time. 
Tuesday week, if the GBTC has gone to 66, that's really good action. If it pulls back and is starting to move under 58, that says, be careful, you're starting to roll over. Okay, make it simple. So what is someone, I, the question came in, what do I do if I'm long GBTC? At this particular point, I would give it another day or two. It depends where you get. If you're long and you've got a really nice profit, just in terms of money management right here, when you have a question and inflection point potential, I'm just going to say to you, take a little bit off. It just If you ask me the question, I'm answering the question by saying take a little bit off. For instance, we keep doing that. We've done that. Our DBA, uh, this is our DB Agricultural Futures uh, Fund. We've had it from the 13s. We took a 77% gain this morning, and, and one of the a tiny little position took off. It's trading at 24.67. And I also showed, I gave my subscribers um, the whole makeup of the DBA because it was so interesting. I couldn't understand quite with the, with the commodities, soft grain commodities going down so sharply recently. I just couldn't understand it. But look at this. This is called cocoa. The cocoa contract is making a little doji candle as we speak right here at an unbelievable, I think it's an all-time high. It was tootling along just three months ago at 4,000. It's at now 9,830. This says to me that there's a really good chance that cocoa is going to pull back. I can't tell you yet if it's going to be one of those huge Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down things. But I do believe that the 8,600 area where there's key support is going to be tested come the first by the first week of April. That's the way I'm looking at now in terms of time. But look at that. And look at this. Uh, wheat has started to move higher. Look, there's wheat um, off the bottom. It's not moving great, but it's moving off the bottom, which helped. Uh, soybean, uh, also not great, but it's moved peak A, peak B, peak C. It's uh, trading. It's down today, but it's been trading high. And um, corn. Corn, as we say here. Uh, went to a peak D and it's, it's uh, now holding tight. But you've had a couple of things that have really moved sharply and have helped. So I've got that out the way. I wanted to talk about it. I was a question came up, so I'm putting them in the in the categories of uh, overbought, meaning uh, Bitcoin and cocoa. Okay. Question. Uh, I've got some other questions that I need to get to here, but let me do this right now. I'll put it up so I don't forget. Oh, the question is: Is that an instant? We start in uh, Robert Hood, and I'll talk about that as soon as I reach it. That was up 65. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. 
All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So the question came in, is this an instant restart from peak D at 17.62 in March in the Robinhood uh, equity? No, it's not, because it took one, two, three. It's the fourth bar. It has to be within three bars. That doesn't mean to say you can't get a brand new buy signal to buy mode that goes to a D. It's just that this particular technique, when the, when you've rallied and the speed with which you, on the fourth highest peak, the speed with which you break to a new recovery high is so intense that it happens within two or three bars. It means there's enough momentum to go even higher. And very often it goes four bars higher. So this has gone to a G slash C, even though I said it isn't an instant restart. I'm just labeling it because the look, the nine period moving average is still fantastic. Way it's 18.38, way above the 17.89 14 period moving average. So remember what I was talking about, that that sell signal to sell mode in the general market really needs the S&P and the Dow together and the, the, the Nasdaq just to drop huge and then try to rally and then fail and close at the low of the day and then repeat the same thing the next day. You get that two days in a row, that's serious stuff, not one day. So with that said, I'm just going to say to you, <clears throat> this is going into the Chamber Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. Uh, it's looking really good. Um, this is, but if, you, if I had to do this purely visually, I'd say there's an arch formation forming, and that just says, there's a good chance that within two weeks' time, we're looking at Robin Hood. If it hasn't broken above 21, <clears throat> very likely to be between 15 and 14, maybe 15 and a half and 14 and a half. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's a leg E in the uh, monthly chart. All right, next question came about the GLD. So the GLD went to a peak D the other day. It's pulling back from the intraday high today. And I, I don't want to go through the whole thing I spoke about yesterday about countries are buying gold, not silver so much, but gold from what I can read and ascertain. But the general public is heavily short. A lot of people are short. Uh, the, the small, anyone who's not a country, there are a lot of shorts. The level is, the ratio seems to be quite high. I'm not looking at that. What I'm looking at is <clears throat> the action of gold as it relates to the geopolitical scene. That's the way I look at it. And I don't believe that you get longer-term secular moves in gold unless everything lines up correctly. If it doesn't line up, you get these sudden big spikes, and then they give it back. But the, now this is what I'm impressed with. You see the 9 over the 14, how high it is, see how the price is still above? But you see that we've spent some time since that very big rally uh, into the March high, uh, in the GLD, this is the Spider Gold Trust. And look how different to, this is to the GDX. The GDX just cannot get out of its own way. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me just take some tea. Yeah, and in the Tiger YouTube, Jeff says, uh, Carl Quintanilla says, a ratio of corporate insider selling to insider buying is at the highest level since the first quarter of 
2021. You've got other people that are talking about the highest level of bullishness, etc. Let's just look at the charts. I mean, I, I've spoken about this I, to subscribers that I'm getting huge insider selling in a particular stock that we have, which has had a spectacular move. And now it's just kind of gone sideways. But lately, even with all the news of 10 million, two or three loads of $10 million sells, um, the stock has still gone up about 10%. Uh, so I, I put that into a category that says, when everything's going with you, you want to look at what's positive and everything's going against, well, not you, but the stock. Um, you want to see what can help push it to the downside. So far, it's certainly not doing this. So I'm just setting that aside. But I'm going to say to you that the GDX, which is the gold miners, I might be completely wrong, but I've watched gold. I mean, I'm from South Africa, so I've watched gold uh, for years and years. I mean, we have Krugerrands. But the whole issue here is that I like to see um, the gold miners move higher and a good concerted effort amongst the gold stocks, not one or two isolated stocks doing very, very well and the others kind of doing nothing or actually faltering. I'm not quite seeing that yet, but I, maybe I'm not looking at enough of the gold stocks. I know Tom looks at the gold stocks intently. It's his specialty. I think he's got a special coming up today. It's worth listening to Tom. But I am going to say to you that I do. First, my own personal preference is that I like to see the GDX. Look at this monthly chart. It's in this downtrend. It's it's just kind of stuck. Look at the weekly chart. It got repelled from the Chapman Wave inside track repellent. So it's acting quite nicely. It's on the 200 period moving average. But that's not, look at the difference between this and the gold chart, GC. Look at this. There's the gold chart. If I can get it right, there it is. Look at the gold chart. It's above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, inner leg D. It's gone to a peak C in the daily chart. Um, and the monthly chart is, is improving a lot. So I like to think of it that there's a geopolitical aspect to gold and that we might find that Silver doesn't track yet the same as gold. It'll, it'll play catch up. But there's a chance that we're starting to see something in the Middle East that countries who, who think of this as an economic geopolitical uh, instrument that they can use are building up reserves because they don't see things quite as well or, or they're not as sanguine as, say, many people. So that to me says the gold stocks then should move if gold does keep holding well. So the question is, is this some kind of a sell signal? And I'm just going to say to you, the sporadic, the move to the upside, and then holding and taking six or seven bars to pull back, and then having another spike, and then making a slightly higher low, not yet a higher high, tells me that gold is in play. I think to me that's the most important thing. For subscribers, we have had a gold stock. We got out of it. We haven't got back to that gold stock. It actually is, has done quite nicely. Um, but I think as not an insurance policy, but as a trading position, I don't yet see anything in the technicals that are saying to me that gold is done for now. And then later on, I think gold is in the process of building a base. I haven't yet ascertained other than to say, I look at this as, a, for those of you who have some history behind you in families who were in Europe or wherever, who survived because they had gold in the, the heels of their shoe, and that's how they could pay to live. Gold is something very instrumental in that case. Maybe that's changed with Bitcoin and all other things that are out there. I'm looking at gold and I'm saying the fact that it's held with the dollar isn't fantastic, but it really has gone up against gold and it's still uh, holding pretty well. It's down only five ticks today. It's not falling at all. It's holding well. It just says to me, gold is in play. Now, how you handle it is something different. So the question was asked, uh, is it possible, if not likely, gold price peak March the 20th um, and the current rally phase? Uh, off the October gold bottom at 1810. Uh, now it goes a consolidation pattern into July. I'm just going to say to you, it might be sideways, but until gold starts to actually trade, it can't just dip under it, but actually trades under 2120 or 2100. Um, I think it's it's in play more sideways 
as an insurance policy for some of the big timers. That's just the way I'm looking at it. Could be wrong. I'll be back. Dallas of 85. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, um, W, which is, uh, it went by a fraction to a new high. F, that's a peak F. There it is. So, this is a Wayfair Furniture Lighting Cookware Online 369.00 was the all time high back in January 2021. Uh, plummets down to the uh, 30 level and now it's trading at 60.65. Yes, so um, I, I can't remember what the question was, but it's holding very well. And I suspect that this is the group that we're going to have to monitor really closely if this is some kind of a pullback coming into the, the uh, early April area uh, time frame, that is, because if you start to see stocks like Shopify, Wayfair, some of those uh, the kind of the uh, online shopping area, if they start to hold well, and tomorrow I hope I remember that, I want to look at the RTX, the RTH, and the XRT. Those are the retail sector stocks. But in the meantime, so Wayfair is holding very well. I would just put it this way. If you're long, you'd be long for a while. I would, I'd hold that long position. I'd be looking to add if there's a pullback between 58 and 56. But give me a yell. Let's look at it together. Because I think that this is the one that in the uh, so January, March, April, in this quarter, maybe going into the end of the summer, 
This is where I would like to see stocks like a Wayfair start to push and lead. And that will be part of the IWM, the Russell 2000. I don't know if they're in there, but this is the characteristic I'm looking at. To lead by going into the 95, 105 area. That is a long way to go. But in the meantime, you still haven't even got to the 70s. So that's the first real area. So right now it's holding well. I wouldn't do anything. Let's look at it again in a couple of days' time if it holds 62 over the next few days. That's actually pretty good action. That's way fair. So, folks, have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll be back with Tom a little later on. Check out my opening call daily newsletter. Stay tuned for Steve and all the great programming coming up today. See you tomorrow.